In this short video, I will be using the ZTEC MIS 21C eddy current fall detector, and I'll be using it with a ZTEC array probe. This is a Surfex probe. Lots and lots of coils in the bottom of it here. And this little wheel you see is an encoder wheel. So as you move the probe, this encoder wheel moves. And that helps you track your distance that you're moving the probe. And if you know the distance between your rivets and the encoder is working properly, you can use um, those tools to help you determine crack length, if that's important to your client. Now, one of the nice things about array probes, look at the coverage that you get here. There's many coils in here, and you get 100% coverage in this area. Now, imagine if you had a little pencil probe. You know, it takes you a lot longer to scan, and you're more likely to miss coverage of an area. And when you miss coverage, you could miss a flaw, so that's not good. So sliding probes work well for flush mounted rivets, but they can't really tell you definitively um, the orientation of a flaw or, you know, if they happen at the same position in the length along the panel, you can't tell if there's more than one flaw there, but the array probe has capabilities similar to a rotating coil in that you have spatial resolution. You can tell if there's, you know, two flaws next to each other, how much space is between the two flaws, things like that. So you get a lot more information with the array probe. Higher POD because there's less chances of missing flaws, etc. So I'm going to take and just place the array probe down in the good material next to my fastener. And I hit instrument null just to make sure we're nice and sensitive. Now the reason the screen is black is because my encoder wheel is not moving, indicating the probe is not moving. But as soon as I wiggle my probe, it's gonna to start to display data. So I'm just gonna move my probe back to the beginning of the row of rivets. Now, one thing I learned with this tester is that if you want your rivets, I have two rows of rivets. If I want those to be properly centered, I wanna have the center line of my probe in between the two rows of rivets. If I'm looking at the probe from the top, conveniently, ZTEC, which has been around for 50 years, lines up perfectly with that center line. I don't know if that was by design or not, but it's going to help me stay right in between my rows of rivets. So I'm just going to clear the display and I'm going to scan along the row of rivets. Now this is about two feet long and that's as long as it took me to scan the two feet. So, in your training for eddy current testing and data analysis, you may have heard the term high repetition signals. Well, if you were doing a tubing exam, tube support plates would be high repetition signals. That means they happen um, often. If you're doing a large heat exchange, you're going to see thousands and thousands of tube support plates. Most of them are probably going to look nearly identical. Same thing when you're looking at rivets. How many rivets do you think are on a jumbo jet? 50,000? I mean, it could be 50,000 at least. I don't know. Maybe you can put that in the comments if any of you aircraft guys know. But... You're going to be looking at a lot of fasteners that look nearly identical, but what you're keeping an eye out for is the one that looks a little different. So if you look at the horizontal waterfall, I guess you call it, that's a C-scan up top. But if you concentrate on the left-hand side, do you get better color if I prop it up? Yeah, there you go. If you're looking over here, you see just a bunch of signals that look about the same. And over here, you got that red spot, which that, that would look different. And you know, data analysis is all about pattern recognition. So you're going to see a bunch of stuff that looks the same, but you're exploring and investigating for the things that look different. Now there's multiple ways to look at the data. So I'm going to go into the display mode here. 
and just sort of toggle through some of the different um, displays we can choose. Here's the listed view. And you can use the buttons to manipulate the data, or you can use the touch screen. There's a bit of a learning curve with the touch screen, but you went through that with your smartphone, so you can figure this tester out also. C-scan, horizontal waterfall. Now you can look here at the labels to see which coil pairs um, are being displayed. So if you're using like an array weld probe that's got plus point coils in it and the sets of array coils. So you kind of have to pay attention to what coil pairs or coil is being displayed because that's going to help you evaluate the data. There we got just a list of you and I can bring that to the lower right if I want to. That seems to be a common preference for a lot of people. Now, when I first saw this, I'm like, well, that looks like noisy data. Well, it's not noisy data. It's just that you're looking at, you know, lots and lots of rivets because I have the window size very wide. If I wanted to zero in a little bit, I can just go into the adjust data window and you see how I'm making that window smaller? Now I'm just looking at, let's see, right there. There I'm only looking at five rivets instead of 20 rivets. And I can make it a little smaller and zero in on one rivet if I want. But, you know, you're just basically cruising along looking at all these rivets. They're all roughly about the same phase. It depends on where I have my cursor. Um, I guess they do change a little bit. But other than that phase changing a little bit, nothing looks abnormal with those. But if I look at this spot over here with that big red, big red circle there. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to change my display mode. And look at the C-scan. Now, like I say, there's a little bit of a learning curve to it, but you can turn this way any way you like. But let's first go out here. And I'm going to make, make it a little bit wide so there's a bunch of rivets. Now look at the row of rivets closest to us. They all look symmetrical, about the same, right? Amplitude's all about the same. Nothing in between them. They all look identical. Now, what about the row of rivets on the other side? Well, we just turn it around. We can look at it from the top, look down in between them. To me, all of those rivets look just about the same. And I don't see anything flaw-like with them so far. You know, just go look through all your rows of rivets. I don't see anything in there. But keep on going and keep your eye out for something that looks different. Does that look different? It should, because you have a full-length crack between two rivets. Now here's where you could adjust your window size down See how that sort of zooms in on the area? Because you know the client's probably going to want to see a picture of this. And you can say, hey, you see how they all look the same on this side? Those are good rivets. And you see when we spin it around, you can see how there's that connection between the two? That's because there's a crack. They say the C-scan um, addresses a lot of the psychological barriers that people used to have to accepting eddy current results. Because if you just have a listed you like this, right? If that's all you had, you're saying, well, look at the phase angle. And, you know, if you flip between frequencies and it's like moving around a little bit, people don't trust that if they're not properly trained. But if you can go to the C scan and you can, you know, it makes a lot more sense to them, even though. You're not really looking at a crack there. You're just looking at how the test instruments is interpreting test coil impedance between different um, coil pairs operating in the send receive mode. So you're just really looking at electrical stuff here. But to the layman, it definitely looks um, like it could be a flaw of some sort because it's different than everything else. 
So, I uh, thought just a little rundown with some flush mounted rivets with the MIS 21C. Thanks for watching the video.